All right. Well, Kurt, thank you so much for being on Elite uh, Agent Talk. Um, glad we made this happen. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we it. tried hard. We're both persistent. So, you know, we made it happen. <laughs> so yeah, well, appreciate you inviting me. No, yeah. Um, just from trying to get the schedule, I could get a sense of how busy you are. Yeah. And I'll keep drinking so we keep our voices. Yeah, we're both crazy busy. I mean, um, I feel like I should be interviewing you when I see your numbers, but you know, um, uh, uh, congrats on ridiculous year, but yeah, I appreciate you having me. No, yeah, no, there's uh, so much to learn and I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of value from talking to everybody, but some of the things that um, I want to share with the audience, um, you've been a 25 year agent, right? Right, right out of college. Yep. And every single year you made Toppers Club. Yeah, so far. <laughs> Knock on wood. We're 25 for 20. I'm in my 26th year. We're 25 for 25. So let's keep it rolling. That's the goal. Uh, have you ever met another agent with that type of like sh streak as far as like every uh, year? You know, yeah. I mean, you know, there's David Sewell's out there and, you know, um, there's tons of them. But I, I mean, I don't know about tons, but probably five or 10 I, I don't that I've met that they're on the Al Candoses and people that are on these long streaks. Um, you know, I'm just blessed to have been around long enough. Um, sometimes it feels like I just started and sometimes it feels like a hundred years ago, you know, it depends on the day, but yeah, it's been a nice run. Um, so trying to keep it going. Yeah, well, yeah. What's impressive is just that the fact that you made it the first year, you know, and then what else we have, we have 14 PCs the last 14 yes, years. Last 14. Yep. Once we, our first one we made was 2016, which was, or 2006, which was in New York city. Um, they had your name in Times Square when you walked out of a Broadway show and it said like Dan up on the lights in Times Square and um, Colin Powell speaking. And like, I mean, it was one of those that if you were going to have a first PC, New York city um, can't get much better than that one. So one of my goals when I got home was I'm never going to miss this. <laughs> that's not, Now that's not in my control. That's in farmer's control, but all I can do is produce and then it's out of my control. But um, yeah, so we're on a nice, nice little 14 streak on that, trying to get to 15 this year. Wow. So yeah, true legend here. And then uh, seven uh, MDRTs. Is that consecutive yeah. too? Yeah. What's that? Is that consecutive years too? Yeah, seven. that's the last seven. I mean, um, you know, we've always, life's always been a big part of our culture here. We've always sold a fair amount of life insurance. Um, what happened, you know, seven years ago, um, farmers brought in these Sabres reps mm -hmm. for helping agents on bigger premium accounts. And um, once I kind of dialed in that it's just as easy honestly, to sell a thousand a month life insurance policy as a $50 a month. I, I didn't believe it for years and years and years. And I kept doing the $90 a month terms. And I still do a lot of 50 a month, 80 a month, 90 a month, a lot of singles in life insurance. But, um, you know, seven, eight years ago, somewhere in that range, maybe nine, I was taught some techniques on um, selling larger cases and presenting larger cases and having the confidence to throw a thousand dollar a month premium in front of someone and see, you know, if you're comfortable with it, they end up comfortable with it. Um, right. And this kind of that saying that you sell what you present. So, you know, I was, I, I started getting used to that larger um, life insurance case, that larger FFS case. And then all of a sudden we're making MDRT. So um, kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, the progression must be crazy, but um, tell me how it, it all, so that's where your agency is kind of at now, you know, um, so I'm talking to a true legend here, so I want to learn about what's going on right now, but let's bring it yeah, back a sure. little bit and um, let me know what, uh, how you got started, what you're doing before, you know, all this. And Yeah, so I mean, probably like a lot of people in insurance, um, I had graduated from Colorado State, I'm a Denver agent, as hopefully some people know, if not, I'm a Col Denver, Colorado agent. Um, went to Colorado State, um, and uh, I was coming out of college, business degree. I started a CPA firm. Um, so in fairness, I went one year out of college at this CPA firm before I started my agency. 
my thought was, um, you know, go big. I was going to try to go to law school and start an insurance agency at the same time at 23. <laughs> so, you know, right. And try to date, you know, cause there's that <laughs> priority, right? <laughs> so, yeah, when you're 23. Yeah. Right. You're 23. You got to have your priorities, beer, dating. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, what ended up winning out, I actually went, in to make an insurance payment to my agent and my agent went you know i make more than any attorney you know he said and i said really he goes why are you going to law school you can own your own business you can set your own hours you'll have complete independence you'll never have a boss your your whole life um and i guarantee you you're going to make more money than any attorney that you're going to be going to law school with um you know, as, as I'm trying to get to DU law school. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that stuck with me. And I'm like, you know what, I'll try both of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're only, there's only 24 hours in the day. I mean, you crank hard. I see you on Sundays and Saturdays working like me. You're kind of a, you're kind of a, a workhorse like me. <laughs> like if my eyes are open, I'm probably thinking about building my business, but, um, you know, I try to mix some good fun in there, but it's always in the back of my mind of how are my producers doing? How many quotes did we do today? You know, all those types of things. So that always stuck in the back of my mind and the business just kind of took off. I'll be honest though, you know, short story. Mm -hmm. I walked into the district manager to interview mm -hmm. and I still remember it. We all have some motivations that we remember when we were doubted or new or a rookie or somebody doubted you a coach a teacher another agent so my dm um there were two desks in that district in downtown denver and three new agents starting at the same time um guy named gary a guy named ken gary had owned a business before in his 30s has kids um ken was in his 40s and he was actually a pastor of a church Okay. And he went from pastor to owning an agency. And then there's this freckle faced kid named Kurt that hasn't sold a damn thing in his life. <laughs> and um, they had made, he made probably the decision I would have made. Kurt's got no shot. So he gets like a little end table. I literally, I mean, it sounds like your grandparents walking uphill in the snow both ways kind of story. But um, I literally had no desk to sit in. And I got, had an inbox that he gave me and I used a shared computer with one of the district managers, um, staff. So <laughs> like a lot of us, um, this business is not about, um, where you're from. It's not about what college you went to. It's not about, you know, what country club your parents went to. This business is about who wants it the most. And I know, you know, that Dan, um, and so, you know, I mean, he basically, I, I remember a couple of weeks in one, that Gary, one of the agents went, you know, I, I mean, if you don't make it, <laughs> he goes, in other words, he already thought I was going right. to fail, right? If right. you don't make it, I may be able to use you as a producer or a CSR oh while you're going to law school. <laughs> yeah. That's so, I mean, you know what? <laughs> right. we all need those, the Tom Brady, uh -huh. six draft pick you know, Michael Jordan being cut from his junior high basketball team. I mean, most of us have something in our past where we're like, you know what, I'll show them. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, I will say, I won't say which one, but now I own one of their agencies. <laughs> so, you know, both <laughs> good guys, but now you look back 25 years later, um, the one who wanted it the most won. And that's just kind of how insurance works, which I love. It's all about grinding mm -hmm. and um, keeping a positive attitude and who wants it the most. Yeah. It's just so similar to sport, you know, there's a mirror. Yep. Yep. I like... was a base. Yep. I was a baseball player and soccer and whatever. And being a short freckle face dude, <laughs> I had to outwork those people too. You know, it's all about outworking people. So yeah, early on, I could already tell um, there's a competitive side in you. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I... it's uh as I see with you, man, I mean, I, I see the same, you know, like I, I could kind of see yours coming a couple of years ago where I'm like, who's this Dan guy, man, he is motivated. He's moving or he's a shaker. And then your numbers just go up, 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 up. Um, 
you know, I mean, I think you probably agree. This is a business where you got to be self-motivated. I don't need, I love my DM. He's a president's council DM. Definitely, in my opinion, top five DM in the whole company. But whether he was on me or not on me, he already knows I don't need to motivate Kurt. He's coming in on Saturdays, whether I bug him or not. He's going to try to get his best numbers, whether it, he doesn't have to email me and go, your quotes were down last week. Mm -hmm. If my quotes are you down, know. <laughs> I know they're down that day. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, that's the fun part of the business is um, we control our own destiny. We don't have to rely on anybody, but our own motivation. Yeah. And that's a great thing to know that we control our, our future. You know, it's not based on someone else liking us more, or, you know, it's based on what we produce. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. Think in a way it's all that, about. That's, that's as, as fair as it gets. But yeah, I have a I very, very similar story where, you know, okay. Um, long time ago where it's ex almost exactly the same, you know, where I started okay. in the district office and somebody said, Hey, cause I was having some license issue because of the past. It's like, Hey, if you don't work out, you know, you could be a marketer for me. Right. How like certain things like that, small things like that motivate you and you still remember to this day. Right, right, right. I mean, I, I was always told by my, by my college uh, coach that there's two types of people those that embrace pressure and those that fold under pressure. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with a little bit of someone doubting you and a little bit of pressure. I do it with my producers. I like to press them a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, not to the point where they quit or hate us, mm -hmm. but I don't mind pressing them a little bit and challenging them and going, Hey, you know, Steve's beating you this month. Um, mm -hmm. You, you know, like I, I, let's see if they've got a little bit of that competitive fire. Um, now mm -hmm. balancing I don't expect everyone to be a Dan and a Kurt, all right? We, we have a sickness. We go, 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 right? <laughs> I mean, you and I have the same deal where it's like, it's, it's always go time. Mm -hmm. But I don't expect that from all my producers, but I do like to look for that natural competitive instinct, whether I'm watching them or not, they're cranking, mm -hmm. because those are the kind of people that should own an agency someday. Man, I look at it like eventually I'm going to be out of this business in 10 years or 15 years or five years or 100 years, whatever it is. I want to make sure all my staff met the best of their ability and they reached their maximum potential. And I also want to know every producer that came through this agency has a shot to own their own agency and their own dream and become their own Dan. Um, mm. You know, eventually it's kind of like with your clients stop. If you're only thinking about yourself, it usually doesn't go well, right? Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about what's in the best interest of this client, the relationship goes well, the business builds, you get referrals. If you're thinking of your staff in terms of like, just what can I get out of them and drive, drive, drive? Um, I don't think that works long term. I think you've yeah. got to, they've got to know you're, you really want their best interest and you re mm -hmm. and if they're so damn good that they should own an agency, I bet you would agree. Mm -hmm. We need to get them an agency. I mean, it mm -hmm. may hurt my agency for a short term losing them, but if they're that good, you know, never hold people back from their dreams. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. You had the same, I can, I'm telling you almost every Dan president's council type agent, when you sit down and have a beer with them at a president's council or a toppers or a whatever, most all of them have a little bit of an edge or somebody doubted them or somebody, you know, like just something in their past, there's some fire in their belly that, little that turned on. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, that's no, I, and what, what you say about your, uh, how you treat your employees, I, I, I 100% agree with that. You know, it's like our obligation to, to, you know, help them become the best version of them, you know? Agreed. Agreed. And if they're not a good fit, not everyone is for insurance, you know, mm -hmm. you give them a try. Not everyone is meant to do this, or they may be better on the service side, the marketing side. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, probably like a lot of things. People have musical talent. People have sport talent. Um, not everyone has the sales gene and mm -hmm. they're not necessarily meant for the sales side, but they may be two of my best 10 year plus staff people were agents in the reserve program that didn't make it. And they're amazing working with my clients mm -hmm. and FFRs, but they're not 
meant to be agent owners or producers. So mm -hmm. part of our responsibility too is to evaluate their talent and don't put a square peg in a round hole. If sales mm -hmm. is not their talent, do they have another talent that would work within your agency? Um, doesn't mean they, they better be able to cross sell an FFR and bring up life insurance and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm kind of a believer you're either a profit center in an agency or you're not. I do want profit centers in my agency, but there's nothing wrong with a couple steady eddies that are protecting the, the golden goose, you know, like yeah. someone's got to be servicing those clients, keeping the retention number above 85%. That's our goal in our agency. Most years we've been above 90% retention. Wow. But um, our goal is 85. So you've got to have those solid steady eddies that maybe they weren't a good producer, but maybe they're a fantastic account manager and doing annual reviews with people. Yeah. It's almost like um, defense and offense, you know, in a sports team, you know, everyone has no different, different roles and as long no as they have a good activity and good um, energy and good attitude, there's always usually a fit, you know? Right. Right. But, but I do agree with, think that even the, if you get great at sales, the agency owner position is just a whole nother, you know, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's sometimes very, it's just so difficult, you know, that, have you found people that you felt like, hey, I, I believe you could do it and they succeeded? Because I've had some people that, you know, work for me that started their agency, but didn't work out, you know? So I, yeah, I mean, I got, I, I, I don't feel like they're safer here. Like I'm, you know, or like in I, some, I, my nephew has been here six and a half years. He has the potential to own an agency right now. He's knocking down 40 policies a month, every month. Like it's wow. just like clockwork. And, um, you know, he's the top uh, producer in our district, which is a really high producing district. But I also, this is a unique story that you may know, you may not know. Suzanne Turner, who's now the, the head of the territory or whatever um, for Texas and Oklahoma, et cetera. Her first month in insurance was in my office. She wanted me to mentor her, um, you know, and kind of before she started an agency, and then she went from agency to district office to territory office to now the head of Texas. And I mean, so we've had some real cool success stories that have blown up, not just as agents, but as corporate executives like Suzanne Turner. Um, and frankly, we've had a few also that they're not ready to be thrown to the wolves. <laughs> like I said, like right. I think my nephew is probably three, four years away from sitting in our chair um, and it's my job to get him there. Mm -hmm. But frankly, at 22, 23, 24, he was not ready. Mm -hmm. And so good kid, tries hard, great attitude, great on the phone, bringing in sales, running the whole ship, different thing. <laughs> and I'm not going to throw him out to the wolves until I believe he's ready. I, I want people to be set up for success, right. not to be pushed in too early. And I'm sure you've experienced the same thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a lot of selflessness to, um, you know, so um, that's really caring for you to look out for, you know, their interests and sometimes um, looking out for them more than the agencies need, because you, you may think like, hey, for the agency, it would be nice to have somebody here forever. No, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> On the agency so, side, I'd like all my producers to stay till they're 90. <laughs> you know? right. I mean, the good and ones. my account managers to stay till they're 90 and never leave. Uh -huh. um, you know, but I mean, it happens. That's life. You can't hold people back. Um, and frankly, if they walk in your office and they're already halfway out the door trying to save them, I'm sure you've been in this position. Maybe you offer them more money. Maybe you match it. Maybe you whatever you do. If they're mentally halfway out the door when they've knocked on your door to say they want to talk to you, my experience has been saving them was not the did not work out anyway. They right. may have stayed three more months or six more months, but their heart was already somewhere else. They're only half. Or I ha yeah, I have had a success story where the personal lines was just not for her. Mm -hmm. But when I moved her to my commercial team, that was her niche. Like she oh, wow. commercial was like her thing. So 
you know, there, that was one example when she said like this, just insurance is not for me. Um, you know, she did not want to deal with my dot, my rate went up $9 and somebody yelling at her, you know, whereas <laughs> commercial, you're dealing with the business owner. That's my world. And, and yeah, it's your world. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's all of our worlds to some extent, but I mean, once in a while you, you, you know, it's just, it's not their role mm -hmm. and you move them to what is their role or they're just not meant for your agency. Um, I set an expectation when I hire people. I, I always use these sports analogies as people who know me know. Um, and I set an expectation. I say, I don't mean this to sound braggy or whatever. It's just, I want to get their mind in the right place. And I will say, you know, are you a sports person? And they'll usually go yes or no, or I used to be or whatever. And I'll go, well, we like to look at ourselves. I'll, I'll use, cause you're in LA and I'm in Denver and my Rockies are playing your, your Dodgers tonight. Um, the Dodgers have been whooping our butt <laughs> for like 20 years. Okay? Hey, what about the uh, Clippers and, uh, and the Nuggets right now? Right, the Clippers <laughs> whooped our butt. All right. <laughs> yeah, that was ugly last night. So thanks for reminding me, though. I've had Sorry. Nuggets, season tickets. <laughs> I know I've had Nuggets right. season tickets 14 years. That was ugly. Yeah, but, but I use like the Dodgers Rockies. I mean, I love my Rockies, but I go – we're trying to be the Dodgers here. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're more the Rockies where you're, you're willing to settle for losing and settle for average and settle for mediocre, we're probably not a great fit for you. We're trying to be the Patriots, the Dodgers, the, you know, whatever, uh, the Golden State Warriors. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to try to win every year. We may not do it, but we're going to strive for it and keep mm -hmm. the energy high and the culture high in the office. Um, but I try to mentally, before they've even started their first day, I want them knowing you're going to have to raise your game to be in this office. Mm -hmm. um, and and it were, it's a lot easier than two months from them coming in going, hey, by the way, Dan's office is used to, what did you sell this month? 611, I think I saw. Yeah. You, was it where you were over 600 this month? Yeah, right? for, yeah first policies. Time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if I did 600 here, we'd be having a parade in Denver. <laughs> but, uh, but um, you know, like, but I still, it may not be 600, but I try to shoot for 150, 200, 250. Like, 50 a month is not okay in my agency. We'll just, mm -hmm. we'll put it that way. Um, and so for you, that number may be 300 a month is not okay in your agency. Everyone has their own goals and I don't push my goals on anyone. I just want to establish that positive winning culture before mm -hmm. they've even stepped a foot in my office. And I think that even helps for recruiting, you know, because naturally people gravitate to winners, you know, like if right. you're, if you, I would think as a, um, you know, someone looking for a job, you want to join a winning team. Like you want to find you want to find someone that's going somewhere and right. I think that uh, attracts, you know, uh, it helps with recruiting. And also in a way it kind of helps with like finding clients too. Like people want to yeah. go to an agency that's established Absolutely. and doing well. And Absolutely. I mean, we all want to work with someone. I mean, if, if I was in legal trouble, knock on wood, I'm not going to look for the attorney that's ranked number 87 in the country, <laughs> right? If yeah. I have to have knee surgery, like I did tear my knee skiing, a couple oh. years ago. Denver has the best knee clinic in the country, supposedly called Stedman Hawkins and athletes from all over the world. Kobe Bryant had his knee surgery here. I mean, athletes from all over the world fly to Denver to get their surgeries here. Um, guess where I went when my knee, when I had a torn knee from skiing, I'm like the guy who does the Rockies and the Broncos did my knee, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same in insurance, doctor, lawyer, your realtor, I mean, when it comes right down to it, we don't want to be arrogant. We don't want to be braggy, but clients do want to work with an agency that has a little bit of, of uh, history mm -hmm. and, and just shows success and feels successful. And they, they have a confidence level when they walk in your agency that this is where I want to do business. Yeah. And I tell that to my staff, like never be arrogant, but there's nothing wrong with being proud of the business that you're in and proud of the agency that you work for. Absolutely. So yeah, as so important as winning culture is, what do you think has helped you establish that? Um, I mean, it starts top down, like every organization, Dodgers, Clippers, 
I mean, look what your Clippers have done since Doc Rivers, right? And then mm-hmm. you probably aren't getting Kawhi Leonard if you don't have Doc Rivers as your coach, right? Because mm-hmm. Kawhi and Doc Rivers have a relationship, right? And it starts, I believe, like most successful organizations, um, it trickles down from the owner. And, mm-hmm. and I look at it like this. I don't ask, you know, did you watch the Michael Jordan documentary? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that was- when Michael Jordan said, remember when they interviewed him and somebody said, most of your teammates didn't like you, <laughs> right? Like, mm-hmm. cause they were interviewing all the teammates and they didn't like him. And I remember very vividly when Michael, I'm no Michael Jordan. I'm just saying, I love, I love sports quotes and quotes from winners. And he was talking about, I don't ask my, my, my fellow teammates to do anything I'm not willing to do. I don't ask anybody to work harder than I work. I outwork all of them. And I think, I don't think you have to be in our agency very long to see the culture here quickly. Like Mm -hmm. Kurt's um, a a positive guy. He's always trying to think of new ways to innovate action, action, action. I'm an action guy, you know, sitting and talking about it doesn't make anything move. Right. Mm -hmm. I like to leave meetings with where's our action steps that are going to happen today. Or first thing tomorrow morning when you walk in, we need this to be to go from conversation to action. Um, and then you have like, you know, I'm going to keep going with the sports analogies. I remember reading Pat Riley's book, The Lakers Coach, when Magic Johnson, Kareem, and all of them were playing. Pat Riley said, the first thing I did when I became the Lakers coach, some people are going to watch this video and go, does this dude only talk about sports? Hey, but, but there's uh, so much correlation. It's just, right? it's just the great learning lessons that we get from have, it. Have you read Pat Riley's book? I don't know. No, maybe you haven't. No, okay. I haven't. Okay. So he said the first thing he did is bring Magic Johnson into his office and say, we're never going to have a winning culture unless I have winners out in the field that are backing me up and keeping me. So, so he kind of had magic buy into you're my coach in the field, mm-hmm. not a snitch, not a backstabber. You deliver my culture message to the team. Mm-hmm. So I believe you need to have many leaders within your agency where I can go, you know what? Quotes were down. They hear that from me every day. I want you to deliver that message to the personal lines team. I need you to deliver it to the commercial team. Um, I think you need to have some magic Johnsons within your, within your culture mm-hmm. um, and positive. So yeah. we're all on Skype. I don't know how you guys communicate. We all communicate on instant message and on Skype. And we have a victory of the day wall on our Skype. Um, we, have, we have the personal lines team, commercial team, the entire team, the producer team, and then a victory of the day wall. So anytime someone saves an account or brings in an account, it hits the victory. of Some people have bells in their office and other things they do when somebody closes a deal. Your, yours, the bell would go off like every 17 minutes or whatever <laughs> is going on in Dan world over there. But, yeah. um, but in our office, if you close an account, uh-huh. I believe, you know, like we all want to be acknowledged when we do a good job. I don't care if you're the CEO of a company or the janitor of a company, we all kind of feel slightly underappreciated in some ways. (laughs) I don't care who you are. You feel, I don't care if you're the president, you feel slightly underappreciated. And so our goal here is bonding and appreciation. And you save that account. We make a big deal out of it in our agency. I'm looking at my computer as I look right here, because 10, 15 times a day, a victory of the day pops up on Skype. And we all go, way to go, nice job, great job. No one wants to save an account when client was yelling about their rate and just go back to the next file. They want some pats on the back. So they go, hey, just saved Bob Smith, put him in signal discount, raised the deductible, sold him an umbrella, got Kurt a life insurance appointment. And we all make a big deal out of it. Because it um, is a big deal. That that's, that's big deal. So, uh, helps the agency tremendously. You know, Absolutely. It's hard to tie compensation to that. So to just recognize them in that way. So, right. so it's, it's a wall. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Vir- we call it the VOD wall. So virtual? it's just a group in, in Skype, the VOD or victory of the day. It's just a, a Skype grouping where everyone on my team can see every victory that happened that day. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it's just a Skype. It, we call okay. it the wall, but it's like we're all on Skype all day long talking to each other. And okay. even when our front desk rings, they Skype me and say, Kurt, Dan's on, on the phone. Do you, can you take this? Um, the other, you know, we like to do lots of little culture building things, not just your typical barbecue for the agency. We, we go on a walk at 1030 every morning as we crank pretty hard from 830 to 1030. We do a, like a team 10 minute get outside, get on your cell phone with your boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, dog, don't care, whatever, just giving yourself a little bit of team bonding every day where the entire team comes together in a relaxed setting rather than a go, 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 go setting. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know if I want this recorded, but we do Wine Friday where we open a <laughs> bottle of wine on Friday afternoon. Sometimes it's a margarita machine. Um, you know, I am in insurance. It's one <laughs> drink. <laughs> it's one drink at two o'clock and we shut our office at four on Fridays. Um, but it's, you know, so we don't have people leaving with DUIs, but we... <laughs> Something to look forward to. Monday, oh. Starbucks day. Friday, wine day. Um, just trying to build something where that would be a place I would want to work. It's not just a sweat shop. Um, they have high expectations. They produce. But that would be a place I would enjoy working. It's got to be a culture coming from you and I. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, definitely is from the top down. You know, we have to outwork everybody. And it kind of like through osmosis, they kind of see you working hard. Yeah. Grinding. Yeah. Um, the walk thing is so interesting. So I think that's, that's a great idea, you know, because what we do, we just sit on our desks all day long. Right. You right. Know? I mean, it, and, and it's a way to, honestly, in fairness, it's a way to keep them off their cell phone all day because <laughs> I do tell them we go on these walks at 1045 and sometimes 345 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. That's your chance to text mom back and text girlfriend, boyfriend back. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I like to have a good culture, but when I see someone texting, when I walk by their desk, it's like nails in a chalkboard to me, <laughs> you know? I mean, I want to run a fun environment, mm -hmm. but I also want people working. <laughs> so, right. you know, not working the heart attack level, but you know, I want a culture of go work hard and then you have your moments of play and that's when you play. So mm -hmm. I think the walk serves a couple purposes. There's the bonding time. There's the fresh air to get your head right for the rest of the morning. And it's your chance to, to, to walk with the team and mm -hmm. text whoever you return some text, look at your Facebook, mm -hmm. look at your Instagram, whatever. Um, I mean, I'm not naive enough to know, to think it's not happening, but I like to minimize that type of activity in my agency while work is supposed to be getting done. Yeah. It's a legitimate, like, true break, you know? So right, if, right. You, if you give them that, they shouldn't be taking that many breaks throughout the day, which is right. Know, and instead of the point. break going, I have 11 staff people, instead of them going 11 different ways, they're coming together rather than splintering apart. So, you know, just a small thing, but it's all those small little culture things, the walks, the barbecues, the Christmas parties, the, we go to a concert we, when there was no COVID, we always did a summer concert as a team we do a quarterly movie where we just leave at noon and um, we go to a movie theater and it just, we get back at one thirty or whatever, but they love, I have a lot of movie buffs in my office uh -huh. and they like the, they look forward to the quarterly movie. So, you know, it's kind of getting to know your own team and what they like and don't yeah. like. Um, I don't want it to be a country club here, but I also want it to be, where there's always some fun things going on that people can look forward to. Probably went way too long on culture there, but. No, it's so important. It's almost everything, you know, when we're building a team for the long right. run and trying to sustain something. Well, absolutely. And you know, one bad person gets into that culture, mm -hmm. one bad apple, and that culture can go from really great to really bad, super fast. Yeah. So you hope that you have a good enough culture that your people weed out the bad people. And they can kind of go, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's a gossiper. That's a negative person. That's a person that we just, we just don't need that. Life is oh, um, hard enough. Right. <laughs> Last thing we need is uh, someone spoiling our, we spend more time with our coworkers than our family. So yeah. last thing we need is a negative Nancy in our office all day, bringing down the culture. Yeah. And while we the have to- Flow to hire quick to fire. Yeah. Well, we have to police- 
culture, that's great that you have staff that, you know, care about the culture enough that they know who fits in and who doesn't. So they're also looking out for the best interest for the agency. Yeah. And then yeah. You know, not only do you not want to have bad people, uh, but you also don't want to lose the good ones due to a bad culture too. Yeah, right. So, that, and I've had that happen. Yeah, I, learned I that have. I mean, I've been doing this 25, 20, I'm in my 26th year. You're going to have the, I lost a, that person because of that person. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes it's just, you know, you made the hire with the best intention. Mm -hmm. You did the interview, the reference check, but you know, I, I like to remind people interviewing is like a single date and deciding you're going to marry someone. Okay. There's <laughs> only is, so much I can find out. I get one yeah. hour with you so and sure. I get maybe a second hour with you. And then I got to decide if I'm letting you in my family. Yeah. Um, you know, so I guess my lesson there is that everything matters in the interview process. I mean, I pay attention on time, body language, eye contact, energy level, questions they're asking. Did they thank me for the interview? Like, did they send an email or a text? Mm -hmm. I asked them to follow up within 24 hours. Did they do it? Um, you know, a lot of times my staff will give me a hard time going, you've interviewed 15 people for this position. Are you going to pick someone? I don't just pick someone to come be a member of the family off of just, a live body that's breathing. If the interview is not feeling right, it, it's kind of like dating. Um, I say this when I speak to larger audiences, almost everyone can relate to the boyfriend, girlfriend that you knew it was wrong from the very beginning, <laughs> right? Yeah. But you tried to convince yourself that it wasn't wrong. Your gut was telling you it's wrong you know, I'll be to, a guy. Okay. She was to, cute. Try, so try, yeah. <laughs> or trying to change or trying to change them. You can't. And what <laughs> you find out, would you agree? Don't you find out usually a month, two, three, four later, they only get worse. Yeah. They don't change for the better. They rarely, rarely, maybe you have a few success stories on that. Most of mine, they were what they were when they were yeah. not doing well in month one and two, <laughs> They never usually turn it around in months three, four, five, six. So yeah. cut bait. Like I said, yeah. slow to hire, quick to fire is a recipe that almost always works. If they're wrong, cut your losses and move on. Yeah, slow to hire is so important. It's, I think it's maybe one of the most important decisions we make as agency I'm, owners. I say the exact, yeah, you're preaching to the choir. I, I, I actually say that exact thing. I make thousands of decisions a year. Mm -hmm my two or three most important decisions are two or three. If I have two or three staff people decisions that year, those are my critical decisions. Makes I make big other decisions. big decisions, but those are critical decisions. And I, I will still wake up at three in the morning on, am I hiring the right person here? <laughs> you know, yeah. I mull it over. I'm a fast decision maker with staff. I'm a slow decision maker. What are some decisions looking back in the years that you felt like were one of the best ones you made besides that thing? Um, you know, I mean, I think that would be a first one though. I think that when you are wondering if you need another staff person, you probably already should have hired. Mm -hmm. So when I look at every agency that takes off like a rocket, not like a slow turtle growth, they take off in big growth. They are an activity based agency where it's all about action, 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 and they are going to hire before they need it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, a, I'm the kind of person, if you need seven people in your agency, you hire eight. Mm -hmm. and, and I use the independent agent model, okay? So what does farmers always tell you? You need one employee per how many policies? Thousand? Yep, but they've been saying uh -huh. for 26 years since I've been an agent, if you have 7,000 policies, you should have seven staff people. Mm -hmm. If you have 8,000 policies, you should have eight. If you have 1,000 policies, you should have one. I'm always one person above or two people or maybe even three people more than the model. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, you know, because then if you lose a key person, mm -hmm. you're not devastated. You need some bench players. You need some bench players. <laughs> you need the, a little bit of money. You need the farm to system. Have that, you, to have that extra person that maybe you don't totally need them. But anyone who's run an agency for a while, they know that you're going to need them eventually. Things you happen. may not need that staff person now, but in six months, you probably will. 
yes, you may have been overstaffed for six months, but then if you, that person wins the lottery and goes and starts golfing every day, mm-hmm. I immediately have my, my agency is not set back for six months. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we're in the insurance business, so <laughs> we yeah, have to like, yeah. you know, be prepared. Uh, yeah. And so, so, I mean, that's one of my lessons, like looking back that if I could talk to a new agent, I would say, even if you think you're not ready, do a half a staff, do a, you know, uh, just take the leap of faith in yourself, have mm-hmm. confidence in yourself to go, but I can't afford that staff person. Well, let me ask you, every time I've ever added a good staff person, did you make more money that next year or less money? Oh, um, yeah, for sure. Well, maybe not even the next year, but looking down further along, definitely. You know, right. It, yeah. Most every time I win, it may have hurt for a minute, but if you hired the right person, the agency is going to keep growing. You're going to get profitable growth bonuses. You're going to get life bonuses. You're going to get <laughs> president's councils or toppers club. I mean, you may not even see like, hey, the agency grew X amount. Well, had it not grown X amount, I wouldn't have gotten my profitable growth bonus, my double down bonus, things like that, right? <laughs> It's it's just a uh, it's one of the best investments we could, we could make as right. agency owners. Right. What about for um, marketing? What what's some of the best decisions you feel like you made? Um, you know, like I I have some dorky ones and some good ones and some not so good ones. I'm always throwing um, time and energy into new marketing, even when I think my marketing is good. I have this rule of five. If you don't have five marketing programs going on, and it may be a life one, a commercial one, and three auto home ones, fine. I always want at least five types of marketing going on in my agency. Social media is is a big one. I see you on social media a lot. We are always going to have people dialing, always. It's been going on for 26 years. Nothing ever beats picking up the phone and go, 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 dial, dial, dial. That always works. Um, and I can talk about what I do with producers and stuff like that if you want. My staff, um, oh, mortgage lenders, mm-hmm. realtor lender. I'm a lender guy. I have plenty of realtors that, have, that send us business. I mean, a good lender can do 15 deals in a month. A good realtor is doing two, three, four deals in a month. Where are you going to go with your time? So, I mean, I go to lunch six days a week including Saturday with somebody that's a networking partner. It could be a lawyer. It could be a leads group person for my commercial leads. Mm -hmm. It's almost always a realtor and a lender though. If you looked at my calendar the last 45 days since COVID's really opened up or 60 days, there is almost no day. I have to eat anyway. Mm -hmm. I might as well be in front of a lender or a realtor that's sending me business. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm a center of influence. I'll go to a happy hour, even if it's a 20 minute coffee at Starbucks or a quick, you know, beer at somewhere here in Denver. Um, I did one last night with an attorney that sends me business. I'm, I haven't seen her in a while. I just said, you got 20 minutes. I'll meet you at so-and-so place. Let's catch up, get your new cards, things like that. So center of influence is always a big part of our agency um, and the thing I would say about the lenders is stay in front of them. <laughs> okay. When you, some people might go, why are you taking them to lunch so often? Or why are you meeting them for coffee so often? I have found if a lender has not heard from you in five, six, seven weeks, you're forgotten. Mm-hmm. So whether you email them, text them, Facebook them, whatever you do, you want to be in front of your core people that are sending you business at least every four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what we found. Well, I stopped getting referrals from Susie because I haven't seen Susie in six, seven, eight, nine, 10 weeks. Her mind's on other things. So staying top of mind with your center of influence um, is critical. And then obviously, you know, I'm always trying to drive business from my current staff. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make sure that my team are profit centers and I have lots of ways that we try to kind of keep, you know, the non sales staff moving the sales staff. I want 10 quotes a day, at least as the minimum and five presentations. My Mm -hmm. goal is you need to pitch insurance 
to somebody at least five times a day if you're a producer. Is that per person? Per producer? Yeah, per person. Okay, if okay. you're a full on producer, uh -huh. you need to dig out 10 new opportunities from, from the phones or referrals or whatever that day. Yeah. That's future pipeline stuff. Mm -hmm. But present a quote or a presentation to at least five people a day. That's gotcha. my magic formula, 10 and five. And out of the 11 pe people, um, how, how many of them are like true producers, like really focused? Three on are full on producer. Okay. Um, and, and I've got, I mean, a lot of us learned a lot of what we, what we do from Paul McGarrell, Al Candos, mm -hmm. David Sewell, some of those models. I, I run a hybrid of all of those models. Um, I've stole stuff from you, Roger Daniel, Ryan Wold, you know, I mean, David Stansfield, there's tons of people that, um, you know, I'm always, um, Nadia Cortez, I'm taking her life programs right now where I'm always, trying to and by the way that's something that i do and i'd love to have you do in my monthly staff meeting um rather than them just hearing kurt's voice i just had christina michelli who's done she's in your area i believe but 160 life apps last year she's already over 100 this year i had a wow. her speak i've had daniela soto mike ruiz spoke to my team about life insurance i mean I like to get a Dan out there and leverage some of my friendships and mm -hmm. say, Hey, Dan, will you, will you do a 10 minute talk? Uh, Jesse Dreyer has talked to my team multiple times. Um, and so, you know, Hey, Jesse, Dan, will you do a 15 minute presentation to get my staff fired up? Sometimes it's good for them to hear something that's not Kurt. They get to hear my voice all the time. It's good to mix it up mm -hmm. and get other success. It's funny how it's kind of like children. Um, yeah. I could tell my staff the same thing 10 times and then Dan comes in and tells them and it's like, they've never heard it before. <laughs> They're like, well, we do it cause Dan said to do it. And I'm like, yeah, oh, shit, also, I said that 10 times, but okay, it's fine. Yeah. No, maybe the, uh, it's a validating, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's a validating. Well, there's other agents that are validating what Kurt's saying. Yeah. That's a great idea though. So you do basically have meetings in like a webinar format? Yeah, you're talking, so you're I mean, about I, I've, all over the country. I've done it in webinars, but I've also, I figure like this, we're very blessed. Mm -hmm. You're a president's council agent. I feel very blessed to know most every good agent in the company. It, it would be, I don't think it would be smart for me to not take advantage of at least, hey, Dan, you're killing auto home. Can you give a 15 minute pep talk to my team? Um, and it could be on a speaker phone. I remember when, um, when Jesse Dreyer spoke, we were having some technical issues in my conference room and I just went, dude, they don't have to see you just talk. I just had Chris Costanza just spoke to my team not that long ago, you know, just, Hey, Chris, I'm going to put you on speaker phone. I'm not going to interrupt. Just tell them your magic, like go. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I mean, idea. that's a way to build culture and get d d new thoughts going on in your mm -hmm. agency. So, yeah, I, I think that also shows a lot of humility on your side, too, to, you know, be in this business for this long and have all these accolades and to want to learn and try to get you yeah. know, other people yeah. to help you. you well, know? you know, another one, because Rosa, my office manager, she's a bookworm, okay? Uh -huh. um, she's in the books. Well, I'm into audible books that are business related. You're never going to see me reading a novel about some warship or something, you know, like if you see me, it's, nope. if you hear me listening to an audible, it's probably it's not right now. Yeah. Right. It's something to build my business or <laughs> yeah. an autobiography or something history lesson. Um, right now yeah. I'm doing your suggestion, by the way, you don't even know this, that be obsessed or be average that you uh -huh. put on your Facebook page. Uh -huh. I'm listening to it on Audible right now. I'm um, not the oh, yeah. second, but yeah, it's right. on my Audibles right now. So we do a book club in the agency. We call it Rosa's Book Club. And we do two, three, four books a year that everyone in the agency read. I know you do that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a, I think you do that too, because that's how I got that particular book was I saw you post. This is a great book. I made, I had my whole team read it, read it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's another culture you know, type of thing that we try to do in the agency to get our heads right. Yeah. Yeah. It gives us a, t a chance to bond and like, you know, have some c common things to talk about. And yeah. Um, yeah. And 
mindset is everything, you know? So um, part yeah. of my responsibility is to at least make them feel like, you know, they could do it, which is true, you know, believe in themselves, optimism, you know, positivity, and just, you know, feel that we're in control of our destiny. I think it's just something that um, I feel like I have to do to my, to my employees, you know, um, right. No like doubt. Believe, believe in themselves. <laughs> so what, what do you think? Uh, one thing I could tell already is that you got tremendous energy. Where, where, where is this, where's this, where's this coming from? You think? I mean, like last night I have seven month old puppies in my house, you know, <laughs> and one of them was sick and got me up at two in the morning and four in the morning. Right. So that I earned these bags that you're looking at right now. But, um, you know, I mean, it's not hard for me. I think it just, um, it's, it's, I don't know if it's energy so much as, adrenaline and momentum you know like once i'm in work mode i'm in work mode um mm -hmm. i mean i try to have a little bit of fun and kind of mix up some fun during the day but you know for me i still enjoy what i'm doing um there are those moments when i'm being yelled at on a claim or yelled at on a rate that i wonder why i didn't finish law school <laughs> you know <laughs> but you know but 90 percent of the time um i enjoy what i'm doing i like helping clients out um, you know, I've, I've never really, I mean, people don't believe this maybe, but I've never calculated a commission. Like mm -hmm. I, I'll come back sometimes after a big light sale or a big commercial sale. And, you know, one of my producers, you know what you're going to make on that? No, I just know if I keep doing my thing, the money always works out. Mm -hmm. Keep active, keep my energy up, keep my attitude. And, and I have my moments, you know, I kind of look at it like the NFL, um, back to sports. If you lose on Sunday, you can whine and cry on Monday and be negative and stay in bed and watch Netflix. I don't care. But what do they say in the NFL? When you come in on Tuesday, you better have forgotten about that game and you better be moving like the Bill Belichick. I don't want to talk about the last game. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the future and what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of trained my mind um, to stay positive, stay energetic and forget the bad things as quickly as possible because they do happen. You know, yep. client screaming at us uh, last week because one of my staff forgot to scan in the affinity discount for her nursing discount. It's $22. Okay. Oh. Um, we went back and got her the $22, but there's an example of I'm either going to let this ruin my day or I'm going to be mentally tough enough to go. That's just what we do just, you know, my, my staff will go, doesn't matter how mad clients are. You always stay calm. And you like, I literally, when that phone call is done, it is out of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of have to train your mind to go. If I dwell on that, I'm giving them control. You know, he who makes you mad wins mm -hmm. and be stubborn enough to go, I'm going to stay positive and energetic today. And I'm not going to let any one person or any words from one person throw my game off. Um, yeah. So I think it's a mental toughness thing that you build over time. Um, I, but it's kind of like anything. If you enjoy what you do, you're going to have good energy with it. Yeah. The, the mental toughness is such a good point. You know, I think w looking back at how I improved as an agency owner, like when I was first started and where I'm now, as far as like mental toughness or like yeah. emo emotional stability, <laughs> it just makes right. a huge difference right. it, 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 when you say training it makes sense because like we, right and then I, I could see how newer agents or agents could struggle with with the downs you know because it, well are, like, i mean i have a warren buffett you know warren buffett what is he the third richest person in the world now he has this quote about don't let words control you Cause just because a client's mad doesn't mean they're mad at you they're mad at the situation and it, it's, it's a, basically a quote of be mentally tough enough to not let words control your and, and ruin your entire day. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell my team all the time, it doesn't matter what crazy stuff went on in the agency today. When I clock out and go to the gym or go uh, take my dogs around the park or go to a happy hour, work is forgotten. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like I'm always thinking about building the business, but that person who wasn't happy at 10 in the morning when I leave at seven at night, that is like a distant memory now. I, I, that, yeah. that feels like 10 years ago because <laughs> I put it out of my mind and I move on. But you're right. I mean, it's our jobs to kind of, and we have our down moments. I mean, I don't know what agents you text, 
but I have tons of agents that um, when I'm having a moment, like we all have in, in business and in insurance, because things don't always go perfect. I have people that I'll go, dude, man, this client, <laughs> you know? yeah. and, uh, and even just getting it out to a fellow good agent or a fellow president's council agent, they don't have to be a president's council. I learned some of my best stuff from the rookies. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we all, it, it, but, but it's nice to have some people to bounce things. That's why I love top shelf and what you're doing. Um, it's almost a stress relief to be able yeah. to bounce your issues off of 4,000 other agents on top shelf that Christian does or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's nice to go, well, good. There's 500 other people that are, have the same problems that I have. You know? yeah. um, we just happen to be maybe mentally tough enough to go, I can move past it quickly. Yeah. Don't let it ruin that entire rest of your day and the sales for the rest of the day. Yeah, it really helps to have people that could actually relate to you. you right. Know, because as an agency owner position, sometimes it could be a lonely situation because, you know, you can't really talk to the producers about your your perspective. Well, you can, but, you know, to, to talk, be able to talk to another agency owner and right. be able to have them relate to your struggles, I think is really, uh, really beneficial. So, yeah, Christian's group is absolutely amazing. And other agents I talked to has really helped me stay positive. But you know, we do have to audit who, who we do talk to sometimes. Yeah. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, so, so, you something. have to have your circle that you trust. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because we're all allowed a moment to vent. I bet you if Jeff Daly or Steve McEnena or Krista or Tim Henry or you name the person, they have their moments. Mm -hmm. It may be they vent. They have a particular person in corporate that they can vent five, 10 minutes to. But you know, but I stick to that. Like, don't tell people your problems too long because 80% don't care and 20% are glad you have it. <laughs> have them, you know, that leaves your mama and your dog that really want to hear your problems for very long. Okay. Yeah. And, and I say that to my team, like, if you think your coworkers really want to hear your problems beyond five minutes, you're kidding yourself. They yeah. have their own problems. Yeah. So, it's okay to vent and it's good to have people that you can bounce things off of that you trust. Um, but even your best friends don't want to hear your problems too long. No. You know, that, that even they'll start rolling their eyes if it goes over five minutes. So, yeah. you know, give them the three minute story and move on um, mm -hmm. and kind of get back focused into what you should be doing that day. Yeah. Or I bet sometimes you, you're able to just, you know, really be able to move on, on on yourself you're so good at you know you kind of get better at it i wasn't yeah. as good at it in year one as i am in year 26 it's that corporate maturity yeah. um you know it's like someone's not necessarily ready to be a ceo they may have the knowledge to be a ceo at 30 they don't have the corporate maturity to be a ceo till they're 45 or 50 or whatever that we all mature at a different level but dude i mean I mean, you wouldn't want to hear the language that used to come out of my mouth at th at, in my third year as an agent when someone <laughs> ticked me off, okay? I wasn't as calm as I am now in terms of, now I come into the game going, I expect five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hiccups today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm on my game. I know it's going to hit me. And mm -hmm. so if you walk in mentally ready that you know you're going to have some challenges today, but you better plow through them, you learn that over the years. Yep. Um, I, I mean, and I'm on my game. Like you shut that door into your agency. Fun Kurt is gone and work mode Kurt has begun. Okay. Yeah. And I'm ready for anything. It could be anything that might happen. I don't know if you know, after COVID, we, we shut our office down for about eight, nine weeks during COVID. Uh -huh. We reopened um, and I get a call on a Saturday about four weeks from reopening. Our basement caught on fire in my building. The office so, building? Yeah, my office oh, building my had a basement fire. My suite was fine, uh -huh. but all of a sudden I've got all my staff back from COVID. We're back at home for six weeks while they're, they're redoing the electrical in the basement because the, the city wouldn't let us in. My yeah. suite was fine, thank God. But I mean, who would have thought you get through COVID you bring your team back in. We're all ready to kind of kick butt again. And then a couple of weeks later, there's an office fire. Yeah. So, you, you know, I had two choices, cry about it or we're back in work from home mode and no excuses. We came in on Sunday, got our computers and our files and our phones, 
by Monday morning, my expectation was back to normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's get our mental focus back and get back to normal. But business throws hiccups at you. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're either going to be ready for them or you're not going to be ready for them. And that's just kind of how, I mean, and I've learned that through a lot of years of kind of taking some punches and learning how to deal with it. Yeah. And that's really where experience helps. And I think one of the key things you said there is that you, it's just better to just expect them, you know, so yeah. when you're, when you're expecting walk in ready, yeah. <laughs> walk in ready. What, it's what we do. Insurance expect the worst hope for the best. Mm-hmm. And when you have that expectation, when bad things happen, you're not crippled by them because you're not in shock. Exactly. You're like, well, exactly. I, knew, I knew this was going to happen. So, and it, it does help when you've been able to overcome so many of them, you know? Right. And well, and if your staff sees you panicking, guess what they're going to oh, do? Man. They're <laughs> yeah. going to feed off of you. Yep. And so it doesn't mean you can't be human and have your moments because your staff knows you're not a robot, mm -hmm. but you know what? I didn't like the fire but by Sunday, we were all here at one o'clock getting our stuff out. And I said, treat this like another mini COVID, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Be ready Monday morning at 8.30 to go back to normal work just like you did at COVID. Nothing's going to stop here. The quoting volume, the sales volume, servicing our clients to the best we possibly can. Um, so this is an interesting interview because usually um, we're, we're all over the place and I appreciate you letting me go. <laughs> yeah, um, no. The conversation it's... goes because I could talk about it for hours, but you know, this is, this is a good format because it's kind of like, it's kind of like having a beer on your back porch. Let's just yeah. talk, see where this goes. Yeah. And everything you're saying, there's so much value into it. You know, there's so much value. There's so much, so, so much to learn, you know, from somebody who's been doing it for so long one of the things that I can't, I have to ask you is like, what, you know, I, I think one of the, one of, one of my strong things, I feel like, you know, being consistent. And I think 25 years, 25 toppers clubs, all these things that you've done year after year. And I think, you know, one of the difference makers when it comes to agents is that, you know, everybody to an extent could do what we do, you know, but to be able to do it consistently, I think is really mm -hmm. where the challenge comes. What is, what helps you stay consistent? Is it natural? You don't even try. It just comes natural. Or is there anything you could tell, talk to? An I, agent mean, I mean, sure. So, some of it is being motivated. I didn't mean to cut you off. I think that was kind, kind of mm -hmm. just where the consistency, how do you do it year in, year out? I think, um, I think what, what it is, is don't get lost in the weeds. Focus on what matters. What matters today is activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today. So I, I believe it's breaking down big goals to daily goals. If you're looking at, you know, kind of the Rome wasn't built in a day and looking at that mountain looks scary. How do you climb that mountain? One step at a time. You know, all I care about is this morning. How did we do? I'm not looking at where are we at for the month? Where are we at? I can't control where my results are going to be at the end of the year or the end of the month. And it's kind of like going to the gym. Like I, 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 I have this thing. I like to celebrate New Year's on a beach. Okay. It's okay. A, I don't live by a beach like you. Okay. I live in Colorado. <laughs> you can drive 20 minutes and you're at a beach. Yeah. Um, so like the last 11 out of 12 years, it's been in Mexico. Yeah. I just booked my Mexico trip um, a couple of days ago for this, for this New Year's. If I, want to not be embarrassed at the pool, be the old guy with my shirt off at the pool, I better start cranking the workups out, workouts up now, not in December. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, that's a four month away thing, but I know that all I can control is today. Right. What am I going to eat for lunch? Am I going to get to the gym or not? Am I going to get the dogs out for a run? I live by a park, so I can take them out for a three mile run or walk. Um, I cannot control where I'm going to be at four months from now. I can control my activity today. And so whenever my agency is slow, I think about where's our activity at? How many quotes are we doing? How many calls are we doing? How many mailers are going out? How many lunches have we gone to with realtors? How many marketing programs are cranking right now? Um, so if I could give any advice on how are you just consistent year in, year out, um, I think some of it is on, on your passion and are you still fired up about doing what you do? But secondly, 
where don't think about where your goals are at the end of the month where are you at today okay where are you at this hour in terms of what could you be doing as a team and this skype wall helps a lot like hey activity looks slow let's kick it up today you know I, i'm communicating with the entire team on where our activity level is on a regular basis and that's a daily in our agency it's every couple hours um, not in a negative micromanage way, but in a positive, hey, Jen brought in three sales this morning. Let's get a couple more before lunch. Right. That kind of thing. I cannot control retention. You can only control retention to a point. Right. Birthday cards, picking up the phone, good service, getting back to people, smiling through the phone, good energy. I can control retention to a point. I can control sales like a science. How many calls equals how many quotes equals how many, you know, or I'm sorry, how many leads equals how many quotes, how many calls equals how many quotes. And then you know your closing ratios. You can almost completely control how many sales you bring in based on your activity. I can only control retention to a certain point, right? Yeah. And so, you know, it's what you always do. Control what you can control. And that's energy and activity. Yeah, man, that was good. That's good, Kurt. <laughs> you make me want to go to work right now. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, I mean, so you true. know, I think you, you, you're the goal everyone's shooting for now, dude. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, it's, so it's you're so the true, you're though. the goal of it, right? Right. No, it's so true. It's like we gotta we gotta focus on what we can do today. You know, I think sometimes it's good to have you know macro vision and you know right. have goals, obviously. But sometimes you know if the goals we should have big ones, but if, if it's too daunting, we, we may feel like what we do today won't even matter. But right. that's, that's actually what we do today is all, all that matters. Think of it like life insurance. I want to sell 52 life policies this year. Let's say that was someone's goal. Mm -hmm. 52 life apps. I've never done that in my life. That's two households a month. Okay. You talk to 400 people in a month if you're a CSR or whatever. You talk to 400 people in a month. Don't tell me there weren't two households in there that you could have sold the mom and the dad, right? Right. That's four policies right there. Take yeah. that times, you know, 12 months, you're at 50 policies, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, you, you break down the mountain into a little bit of daily, weekly goal setting. It's not so daunting. Like I want to sell, you know, 500,000 a year in commercial. That seems crazy until you break it down by week. Mm -hmm. Then it's not so crazy. You know, I need whatever, 20,000 a week or 10,000 a week in commercial premium. That's not that crazy of a goal if you're working hard every day to get to, you know, say you want 50,000 in premium, 40,000 a month in commercial premium, 10,000 a week. You can get 10,000 a week if you work hard enough. Yeah, it's just it's break it down. down. Yeah, break it down into bite-sized pieces that you can you can manage that, right? Like and I said, I wanted my abs to look good <laughs> on January <laughs> one. <laughs> They're okay right now. They're not going to get to good by eating McDonald's and not doing my cardio. So mm -hmm. I know I've got to break this down, and it's kind of a mind game that I mean, as as you know, a lot of people go, "Who cares what your abs look like in January first? It's a goal. It's having some carrot in front of me that that's coming and that gives me some, some fire. Like I'm sure you run some promotions with your team and try to keep them fired up on a daily basis. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, are you a promotion guy? I don't know what, what keeps your team so fired up like day in, day out. Uh, yeah. A promotion. I mean, there's so many things you talked about there that I want to touch on, but yeah, promotion wise, um, the double down has been great. Uh, um, being able mm -hmm. to pay out on the next check, uh, September 10th check, I'm paying out an additional 25,000. That's all thanks to it's nice. gonna, that's dispersed into the, you know, 10 employees, but nice. what, I, I, I love having that meeting yesterday, the results meeting, because, you know, it's just something to get excited about, but there's different ways to, you know, um, motivate them. But anytime, there's PGB or um, uh, mm -hmm. double down. This it just goes, just my ability to get them more motivated, and not 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 that financial motivation is everything, but I just want to touch on man that uh, 
that small steps, you know, that small steps, mm-hmm. even though it doesn't seem like you're going anywhere over a long period of time, you just, you, you, you get somewhere, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. And I think w- what you touched on that I could really relate to is when it comes to the similarity of b- building a business and fitness, mm-hmm. it's, it's how long it takes, you know, uh, how one workout barely makes a difference, but when you do it every day, mm, you know, no and, doubt. And, and do you remember Kurt when we first met? Yeah, I saw you at the gym at the <laughs> Farmers Open. I mean, yeah. I think I've I've passed by you a few times before, but when we actually started chit chatting, uh-huh. you know, there's a good example. We both could have been laying by the pool or at the golf tournament. We're yeah. at the Farmers Open, which is about as cool of a event as you could possibly be at. We decided, you know what, I know I'm at the Farmer's Open, but I'm still getting to the gym. Even if it's a 40 minute or I'm going to get to the gym. It was, um, a, mor- it was so, a morning too. You know, was it? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we weren't hung over. Right. <laughs> probably, probably, you know, we deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> you work hard enough to get to the Farmer's Open, take advantage of the open bar, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we still made it in right. there in the morning and we're still going right. to work, work out. <laughs> right. It, so. Right. No doubt. Yeah. It's a lot of discipline um, involved there. So, Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Kurt. Um, before we uh, wrap this up, what what are uh, some of your goals and what are your, what is your vision you have for the agency? Do you are you just focused on the everyday working hard, or do you have something macro too that you have? Um, you know, a little of both. I mean, I'm breaking it down. Um, you know, people like you and Costanza and people like that that are just blowing numbers <clears throat> that we're not ever. I'm not used to seeing the kind of numbers that people like you are are putting up that keeps me fired up. No question about it. Um, but in terms of like the macro vision, um, I keep it funneled by department. So my commercial team, the, the eye is on 500,000 in premium a year. That's what they do. Not to say the bar won't get raised next year, but that's where their bar is. Um, FFS, you know, um, uh, we're, we're trying to bring in 2 million to 3 million in assets. Like that's kind of the general FFS goal. Um, uh, personal lines wise may seem small to you. We need at least a hundred auto home a month. That's the minimum kind of production where we, I mean, my goal is to get to 200, but our minimum production is enough quotes to do a hundred auto home a month. Life insurance. My goal is to make MDRT. So, may not be to sell 150 little policies. I'm more of a, of a whale. I, I'm more of a whale hunter when it comes to life. I do quite a few little ones, but I like the big ones too. So, hey. you know, yeah. So I'm kind of breaking it down by department. And then how, how involved are you with the, the sales process or do you, do, do you sell all, all those or? or yeah, me see? personally, Mm-hmm. I am very involved in commercial. Um, I close, I still close commercial, even though I have team that can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I still close commercial. I spend a lot of my time motivating the producers, mm-hmm. looking at um, the 20,000 foot view for the personal lines team and letting the managers manage because mm-hmm. they're good at it. Um, I'm very involved with producers and activity on the producer side and on the commercial side. And honestly, most of the life FFS, I'm still bringing in. But if you asked me to do a 360 on the homeowner, on the homeowner's 360 (laughs) value, forget it. Okay. I haven't personally run an auto quote in probably five years. How about a renter? Or a renter. I know what to do and I'll coach them. The producers will bring in quotes a lot and go, how would you close this one? And I'll coach them up before their meeting. And we love Zoom. I mean, if you can't meet with a client face to face, your next best option is to Zoom them Mm -hmm. um, and make sure that you're building a little bit of rapport because let's face it, is farmers rates lower very often? No, (laughs) at least (laughs) in my territory. I don't know in Southern California, but in our area, we're not the cheapest game in town. So you've got to learn to sell value you got to go in with a million liability when they're at 500,000 on the home. You go in with 250,000 property damage on the auto when they're at 100,000. How much does it cost to raise an auto quote from 100,000 property damage to 250,000? Not the BI limits, the PD limits. 
a couple dollars a month. couple dollars <laughs> but you're going into the presentation mm. with something to sell right. something that makes you look better if you're not providing any value in the presentation you're just an order taker okay yeah. so i'm very involved in coaching the producers or the account managers i'm very involved in like how would i close that um quote mm -hmm. right not unethically how would I ethically close that quote where you're providing value and signal and better coverage? And there's nothing wrong with saying that your agency is going to take better care of them from a service standpoint than the agency before them. I like to know what their pain points are, mm -hmm. yeah. right? What did you like? What did you love about your last agency? What didn't you love? Like what didn't they do well that maybe you would be looking for in a new agent? Like, asking some questions where you're starting to build some rapport and find out where their pain points are, especially in commercial. Mm -hmm. It's very important in commercial to know what value did you not get from that agency that you could, that maybe you'd be looking for in a new agency. Um, when your rate is higher, I bet I've sold over a thousand policies where my rates higher, maybe 2000, maybe 3000. Um, you can get clients to pay more, if you did it right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's where I try to spend my time is coaching, yeah, coaching, so, wow. how to save an account and how to bring in an account. Yeah. Yeah. That's what sales is, you know, is when you make, not make, but like you, when you're able to provide enough value when they're paying more for you, you know, because if you're less and or like, they're going to leave you, Yeah. you know, you're, you're in, we call it save mode. As soon as they start saying, I have other quotes, I have this, I have, you're in save mode. Now's the time to start asking questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it, I'm, I'm just as happy when one of my service staff saves a six policy household than when my producer team brings in a six policy household. At the yeah. end of the day, you and I, they both matter equally. Same premium, you know, and it's, yep. in fact, it's yep. easy, easier to save it than to write a whole brand new one. Absolutely. <laughs> I like the new ones, but I like saving too. So that's yeah. why we do the victory of the day is about who did you save and who did you bring in? They're both equally as important in our office. So, yeah, no, that's one takeaway I'm going to implement is to just have, it's basically an instant messaging board, right? Where everybody could yep. just yep. Chat, chat in and, uh, yeah. Uh, that's a great idea to just keep everybody locked in and kind of like know what's going yep. on up, up to the exact Instant minute. communication with yeah. each other. Right. Up to the exact minute of when someone does good, something good, then they get the positive reinforcement and the recognition instantaneously. I think that's great. Yeah. Keeps, keeps yeah. everybody locked in in that task of uh, the daily activities. So yeah, Kurt, anything else we want to um, touch base or leave, leave you with know, us? Um, we as probably as worn out our viewers that are <laughs> you this. Did, you this yeah, it feels like the phone call when we talk, like we could take any subject, marketing, staffing, um, culture, um, goal setting, hiring practices. Um, you know, really, I think you and I could probably do a two hour on each one of those subjects, but it's fun that we got to sprinkle in a little bit of marketing, a little bit of culture, a little bit of sales, a little bit of staffing. Um, cause you know, let's be honest, all of the, all of the agents on this call, we're juggling all of those things every day. Right. Um, you know, so no, I mean, look, I mean, w maybe we'll do a follow up one in 2021 or whenever you want to do it and we can go again if anybody wants to hear more, but, um, I really appreciate, you know, what you do and, um, you know, and I'm going to be pinging you and bugging you till I can get even close to what you're up to. <laughs> so, so I appreciate uh, the conversation from someone doing as well as you're doing. And clearly you st you're staying humble, doing the numbers you're doing and going, I can still get stuff from Kurt. I can still get stuff. I think you had Sammy McKamey on last week. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'll sit and listen to Sammy and Dan and other good agents. I'm never going to reach a point in my agency where I'm not willing to steal ideas from a good agent. So, you know, um, it's what it's all about. Like you're, and you're never perfect. There's always lessons you can learn from a good agency. So I appreciate your time. No, I appreciate yours, Kurt. Yeah. And that's so true. There's, there's, I feel honestly feel like we're just getting started, you know? Um, so, uh, there's, it, it would be foolish for anyone to think like, Oh, I, I reached a certain point and there's not enough for me to learn, <laughs> you know, especially, no and, and I have so much respect for 
you know, agents have come before my time. I, I almost feel like we're, we're how old? Are, how old are you, Kurt? Because you look. I'm sick. not. You're, a, you're not getting that great. one out of me. You're <laughs> yeah. not getting that one out of me. <laughs> you look like <laughs> you can do the math. Graduated from college. Okay. Twenty six year agent. <laughs> you can yeah. do the math. Usually they say <laughs> that. Usually they say the Asian guy looks younger, but <laughs> here's the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, I mean, I appreciate you saying that. I don't know. Lots of water, well, baby, but <laughs> I okay. appreciate that. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, huh? Okay, but it, yeah. regardless, I just respect. You know, all the agents have uh, paid the way for us. You know. All, all, all um, just it's, it's, it's we what we do was so different from like other uh, independent agents is that you know we, we represent a brand, you know what, right. you, what you guys have done in the communities and really uh, helped establish you know the the level of customer service and the corporate side the claim service too uh, is something that I think all newer agents should um, you know really look up to and respect uh, paving the way. So thank you for everything uh, you you done, and I'm looking forward to just yeah connecting with you and actually. You know, celebrating an actual, you know, uh, achievement. Club. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't wait till we can see like our fellow agents and get back to non-COVID. You know, we're all getting by the best we can, but yeah, those will be some those will be some fun parties when we're all back together again. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Same here, Kurt. So yeah, thanks again for everything you've done and for your time. I know, understand it's super busy, but you you there's so much value brought in this uh, uh, talk we have. So um, really appreciate uh, I can speak on behalf of the other agents that are, uh, are viewing. And I think you're very open to helping out other agents too. Um, so uh, really appreciate what you've done for, um, you know, uh, the company really. I don't know why I'm speaking on behalf of the company. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. I mean, you're personal lines agent of the year. You can speak on behalf of the company, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, we're all in this together. It's a daily battle. Um, you know, so let's have more victories than defeats. Like that's what it's all about every day. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kurt. Uh, we'll, we'll keep in yep. touch and uh, best wishes to you and, and your agency. You too. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks again. See you, buddy.